Oklahoma City now three games over the 500 mark. The big thing is, will they take a step back like it's happened all season up to this point, or can they build on that three game over 500 lead? Back in the fifth spot of the Western Conference as they end a three game losing streak. This is going to be a discussion, Brendan, on a, a daily basis about the Thunder, whether you see signs that they're headed in the right direction. Yeah, uh, it's, it, it's going to be talked about at nauseum just because this team was put together to make a championship run. And right now they don't look like a championship team, but they have their nights where they look better than others. Um, they're still trying to come together. They're still trying to figure this out. They, they haven't figured out this Rubik's Cube yet of how to use all three of these guys, Carmelo, Paul George, Russell Westbrook, and how to, how to make it look smooth and cohesive. And that's natural because we've seen big threes take time before. It took the Miami Heat a whole uh, a full season before they were able to get together. Thank the Lord. <laughs> 2011 championship. But it was one of those things that if it took LeBron, D. Wade, and Chris Bosh a certain amount of time, you have to, under, you have to expect it's going to take uh, Russ and Melo and uh, Paul George a certain amount of time as well. And we can't rush it. But we're more than halfway through the season. This is 43 games in now. We're not talking about the first month or so, the way Miami did it, or even the adjustment when it, LeBron came back. But it's still like... When you start the season out, all three of those guys want to do it their way. Yeah. Then they say, okay, that's not working. Now we're trying to figure out how we're going to get it done. It, listen, we, we played a lot of games in the season, but there's still a long ways to be played to being a championship team and to being a cohesive unit. That takes time. My thoughts are they weaken themselves the second unit so much that by putting the three stars together, is still not enough to get it done in the Western Conference. Mm. They are not nearly as strong with that second unit as they were a year ago. Therefore, with the Paul George situation up in the air as to will he stay or will he leave at the end of the year, to me, if the opportunity presents itself, I would do a deal. And I would move Paul George, see how much you can get for him now. Westbrook's going to be your, your centerpiece for the next X number of years, and that's the direction I would move him hmm. because they're not getting to the Western Conference Finals. Right. You're only saying cut your losses. Only problem with that is you're going to get penny, pennies on the dollar for Paul George. Everybody knows he wants to go to L.A. So unless it's a trade where he, you're trading him to L.A., teams aren't going to offer you much. They're not giving you a first-round pick. I, for a, I, I don't know about that. I you, mean, think, you think they're going to give you a first-round pick for a player that they I think is going to leave? Well, first of all, if you're talking about contending teams, you're talking about late first-round picks by and large. The Cleveland Cavaliers are the only real contending team that has – one of those really attractive first-round picks because they have Brooklyn's. But a team that might be willing to give you a, the 20th overall pick if they think they're close for Paul George, even if it's just for a few months, I, I don't think that's out of the realm who, of possibility. Well, who, what, what it comes down to is who is close enough to give you that type of pick and to risk it. And to risk, once again, we're seeing how long it's taking OKC to integrate Paul George. Right. If you get Paul George at the trade deadline, you just can't throw him in there like this is NBA 2K. He has to get integrated. You have to learn where he wants to be on the court, where he feels most comfortable, how he fix, fits in with your other stars. I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't do this deal if I was another team. How about if it, there's a team out there? I mean, we're all saying right now, Paul George, L.A. Lakers. But how about if there's another team that steps up to the table, talks to his agent and says, we want a commitment long-term with him. We'll do a deal for him. We're not worrying about this season right now. We're worrying about starting with him next year, fresh from the beginning, and what we can add to it, and we're willing to get, Maybe there's somebody else that attracts him at the last second. Never like, know. There wasn't a lot of talk about Chris Paul going to Houston before it leaked out a little bit beforehand. It wasn't like Chris Paul's going to wind up in Houston. But Chris Paul apparently said, wanted to go to Houston. Well, he That's did. That's okay. part of it, yeah. So maybe there's another spot that has Paul George interest right now. Maybe he doesn't want to play with... Somebody else on the Lakers right now. Do you think that the Boston Celtics wouldn't be willing to give up one of the many, many assets they have in terms of people on their roster and draft picks if they think they're close enough? Uh, it's, it'll Even be, if it's for a couple of months? It, it'll, be, it'll be tough because wh who would they give up? What, 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 like what, they're not giving up Tatum. They're not giving up Jalen Brown. So what would OKC be willing to take back? Uh, they've got, first of all, they've got picks. A couple of picks. They have, they have about 40 picks at any given time. Yeah, but some of those picks are high picks. Like, if you're Boston, do you want to give up a high pick when you can get a night? Paul George is going to be commanding close to $200 million next year. Guess what? Yep. If you're Boston and you get a pick that's in the top 10, I get a, get, a, get a nice young player that I can integrate into my system, and guess what? I'm paying the pennies on the dollar. It's a, I, so saying, I don't see it for Boston right now. I'm saying you've got assets. You've already got really good young players, and you're in position where you're close enough. You might think about it. you got to give up something to get something. Would you, would you give up Haywood? No. What's the thought? I haven't seen a very I haven't seen, interesting thought. I haven't seen what my team looks like with Gordon Hayward. Just the thought. Year. See, just the thought because these young guys have stepped in. They played pretty darn well. So maybe you look at getting Paul George and do we need do we need Gordon? 
or do we move them and get something back? I don't know, man. You're stirring the pot up here, Coach. You're stirring the pot. We're, we're all stirring the pot a little bit.